In this video, we're going to talk about what VoiceOver is, how to set up VoiceOver, we're going to see it in action, and we're going to go through some usage scenarios. We're going to use three different types of visual indicators. We'll use a hand every time I tap. Every time I hit a button on the outside of the device, we'll give you an icon. And we're going to use arrows to help point out key information on screen. Apple describes, with VoiceOver, you can use simple gestures to physically interact with items on the screen. It's the world's first gesture-based screen reader. VoiceOver will read to you what is on screen from icons on the home page to email. I think of VoiceOver as an audio-based cursor. Using audio feedback, you always know where you are on screen and can then choose to take action. Before we get started today with VoiceOver, I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to manage uh, different accessibility features. And this is a really good trick and tip if you are someone who uses the iPad a lot with a lot of different accessibility features. So it's a way of getting in and out of the accessibility feature really quickly. So, uh, I'm in general. I'm under the settings application. I'm in general. I'm going to scroll down to accessibility. I'm going to tap on accessibility. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom until I get to triple click. So I'm going to tap on this, and I'm going to tap and, and select VoiceOver. And what this is going to do is this is going to turn on and off VoiceOver every time I tap the Home button three times. And it'll just make it easier for me to manage using the application. So before you can set up VoiceOver, the first thing you want to check is you want to check your international settings. VoiceOver will speak in the language that is set up in your international settings. So tap General. Uh, scroll down until you find international and then you want to check what language your language is set to and then that's what voiceover will use when speaking back to you. So this is really important for international uh, for international audience. Let's set up voiceover for the first time. Tap on settings, tap on general, then scroll down to accessibility and tap on accessibility and then let's tap on voiceover. You're going to see a lot of settings inside of VoiceOver, so let's go through them. First one is Speak Hints. And this is really good when you're first starting out. And what it'll do is when you move your finger over and have VoiceOver tell you what an item is, the Speak Hints, if it's turned on, will tell you double tap to launch the item or open the folder or, or whatever you can do there. So it's a good way of really sort of reinforcing there's a lot of commands within the voiceover environment, and so it's a really good way of reinforcing that. As it, obviously, as you get used to it, you'll turn that off. The speak rate, which is the next item, turtle is for slow, rabbit is for fast. You can see that I'm not very good at this. I have it f fairly slow. I just don't usually interface a computer this way. And then uh, type feedback is your next option. I I'm going to tap on that. And what type feedback does is, with a keyboard, you can choose to either have it click on it, type a speak back a word, or speak back the characters, or in this case, the default setting is to speak both characters and words. And that will make more sense as you as you use a voiceover to read back to you, whether you want to just choose to read back characters or just uh, whole words. So I'm going to leave the default there. Phonetics, when it comes to uh, single characters, it will like uh, tell you A is for alpha and N is for November. I have that turned on, although I don't really hear it very much. Use pitch change and compact voice. These are just ways of fine-tuning the voice feedback for you. Braille interface, let's tap on that. So here you can see I've tapped on the Braille interface, and it's a, all the Braille interfaces are Bluetooth. And so it, it has sensed that my Bluetooth has turned off and said, do you want me to turn on a Bluetooth? Uh, I'm going to select no, but if you had a Braille interface, you would turn, you'd have your Bluetooth turned on, and it would then ask you to, to pair up with your but your interface. So I'm going to turn this off. And then you have your different Braille options. Going back, when VoiceOver is active, the rotor is a way of uh, changing the settings of VoiceOver while VoiceOver is active. So you don't have to keep going back to the settings. I'm going to show you here, we have character selected, uh, word selected lines, and most importantly down here, this is not a default, and so you want to do vertical navigation. And this allows you, you're going to use VoiceOver to both navigate and for to do, to read back content to you. And so when you, you can use the rotor to switch the navigation from horizontal, uh, left to right, to vertical up and down. And so this is uh, a way of doing that. So you want to definitely select on vertical navigation. Uh, language rotor, 
It's the same thing when you're in a situation where you want to change the language. I don't have any other languages selected. I left that blank, so there will never be a language rotor. Navigate images, always with descriptions or never. So this is when you're in the web browser, it'll read back to you. And then speak notifications. This is, you know, your, all of your auditory alerts and visual alerts, this will actually speak them back to you. So those are the settings, and then we can go ahead and turn on, these are the settings the way that I want them, we can go ahead and turn on voiceover by just tapping and sliding to the right, and now voiceover is on. So we've just turned on voiceover, and you'll see that it just popped up the practice button, voiceover practice. So I'm going to uh, swipe across to select it, and then double tap now to launch voiceover practice. Okay, so, over practice. Heading. so it just read me the heading, and if this is just a free area where I can do different gestures, it'll tell me what the gesture is, and it'll tell me what it does. So I'm just going to show you a couple of them. This is flick to the right. Practice voiceover gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. So you just heard my instru the instructions when I flick to the right. I'm going to flick to the right again. Touch. Select item under your finger. Double tap. Activates the selected item. Two finger double tap. Start and stop the current action. Touch. Select item under your finger. Flick right. Move to next item. Flick up. Move to previous item using rotor. Flick down. Move to next item using rotor setting. Flick left. Move to previous item. So you can see um, this is giving me a lot of different feedback on each of my gestures and there are a ton of different gestures and I'm not going to be able to do them justice in this video. Uh, notice how when I used f different kinds of flick, it would say flick would, would advance to previous item or advance to next item or previous item, but if I flicked up or flicked down, it would do whatever the rotor setting was set at. So again, this is a way of customizing. The rotor is a key component in customizing its usage. <laughs> When you first launch VoiceOver, there are two ways of navigating through, in this example, the home screen. The first way I can navigate is I can tap, and what it will do is... 97 new items, 16 apps. You can see that it read, it read that folder, and then it told me to double tap to open. If I can... Activity tools folder, 14 apps. Double tap to open. Okay, I swiped again on the screen. It moved to the next folder, which is Productivity Tools. It told me there were 14 apps, and it told me to double tap on the screen to open. So that's one way of navigating, and I can keep going from upper left-hand corner to lower right-hand corner by swiping one time to the right. A second way of using VoiceOver is if I have limited sight, I can swipe across an icon and it will tell me the contents of that icon in the case of a folder or the the name of that icon and it'll also give me a hint. I'm going to do that with paper camera first. Adobe Viewer. So I just I just swiped over across Adobe Viewer and it told me double tap to open. And then I'm now going to swipe across another folder and it'll tell me the contents of that folder. Content tools folder. Six apps. Double tap to open. So I swiped over Content Tools folder. It told me there were six apps in there. And if I double tap, I can open it. Let's go ahead and double tap and let's open. Opening Content Tools folder. Content Tools. Opened. One of the usage methodologies behind VoiceOver is to, is to drag your finger across items. So I'm going to show you by dragging my fingers across and down and over across these, um, these app icons. And you'll see that... Uh, voiceover starts reading them back to me, so watch. Baby, Qtaba, Ingenie, Drums, it, Finger Drums, Fun Box, Food, My First one, FW, Finger Drums, Guitar Free, I Hear You, Toka Hair Salon, Pay, Doll. So, the way that I did that was drag my finger across whatever I wanted it to read back to me. Now I want to use voiceover to help me navigate from page to page. So as you can see on screen, I'm on the last icon of the page, and if I tap or flick over, if I tap or flick on the page icons at the bottom, I can actually now go to the page uh, scroller. So I'm going to do that. And it's now, voiceover is giving me feedback about what page it is. If I double tap again, I can go to page two. Page two of nine, adjustable. And if I double tap again, I can go to page three. 
page three of nine. Adjustable. Now, if I swipe across an icon, I can, or an app, I can then activate that app. And Ginny. And if I double, double tap, tap now if I double tap, it'll open and launch the icon. If I want to get back home, then I press the home button once, uh, and I'm back in the home screen. Home. So that's how you go backwards. You can cycle all the way through, but oftentimes it's just easier just to go back to the home screen. VoiceOver is a very powerful feature. And in order to change the settings of how VoiceOver behaves without having to go back to the settings application, iOS environment has implemented this rotor concept. So I have VoiceOver activated, and what I can do basically, if you remember in the earlier part of the video, we have when you flick to the right or to the left, you can navigate left or right. But then if you flick up or down, depending on how you have the rotor setting, you can get different characteristics from um, VoiceOver. So right now, uh, so let's focus on activating the rotor first, changing the setting, and then showing you the setting. So the way that you activate the rotor is it's sort of like changing, it's like turning a dial. It's a two-finger um, action. You put both fingers down on the iPad surface, and you turn it as if you were turning a dial. Words. And that's exactly what I did. I, I changed now to words. I'm going to change it again. I'm going to turn my little words. dial. Containers. Now it'll go to containers, headings, uh, headings and vertical. Navigation. Now I'm at vertical navigation. So if I were to flick down, instead of going and instead of it reading the word of the container back to me, it would. It's actually going to go down to social folder. Social folder. And if I go down again, it'll go down to development. If I go up, it will go up, and that's because I have the vertical. I have vertical navigation set up. Now I'm going to change this one more time to characters, and I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to flick up and down, and you'll hear it read my name letter by letter the name of the folder. Semi folder A M. So that's where you can change the character or have read the word or vertical scroll and you can all do this on the fly while voiceover is activated. <laughs> voiceover can be used as an effective navigational tool on the iPad. So in this particular scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to a separate page, and then I'm going to launch an app. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe over my page navigation. One of nine. Adjustable. That highlights my page navigation. Finger to adjust the value. And I'm going to double tap to move to the next page. Page two of nine. Adjustable. And I'm going to double tap again to move to the next page. Page three of nine. Adjustable. And let's say I wanted to launch the Alphabet app. Now the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to swipe and stop my finger at the point of the app and let go. So I'm going to swipe and then stop. And what that did was it selected the Alphabet. And then now I just am going to double tap anywhere on the screen and it actually launches the app. One of the key usage scenarios for voiceover is reading email back to the user. So what I have here is I have my email open. I you can see that I get e email from eBay. And I'm just going to go through how you might process email and using the rotor, how I change some of those settings. So right now, if I swipe to the right, it'll start reading line by line. So let me do that. eBay sent this message to Sammy Raman, Sriman 2000. OK. And so if I want to change the rotor, let's say instead of reading it from left to right, top to bottom, I wanted to sort of scroll through it a little bit faster. I mean, I can I want to scroll through I'm going to use the rotor to change. There's characters words. And again, all these settings are changeable in my settings, in my rotor settings. But uh, let, me, let me try to find. So this will just jump from link to link, which is pretty interesting. That can be very useful. Form control and a uh, vertical navigation. So I'm going to start swiping down. You're registered. Still looking for. You saved Riften as something you are looking for. Large adult full size Riften gate trainer. Alarm chest prompt extra handles. Link image. Now notice when I, uh, so I was there, I was scrolling down vertically. I'm going to scroll to the right, and it actually reads the content in the image. Adult Riften Gate Walker slash Trainer Great Condition Foldable. Right. It tells me that it's an image. Um, I can then read the text or the links underneath it as well. But uh, the idea here is that is one of the settings that you turn on and off uh, inside the system if that's something you so desire. Another key usage scenario for voiceover is web surfing. So as you can see on this page, there are a lot of links and a lot of information. So as I'm moving left to right, um, I may want to skip over some of that information. So I'll just sort of go through normally, and then I'll use the rotor. 
this would be normally going through every line item left to right. But I, then I can use the rotor here uh, to change to characters or words. I'm going to go to links. Links. So now I'm going to use the voiceover to just switch from link to link. And turns out the stars are a link. All reviews button is a link. So in this particular area, notice how I jumped from customer review all the way down to these sellers, uh, and then one used, and I can now keep jumping down the page. So, so by switching to links, what I've done is I'm now navigating the page faster. I could do the same thing with headings, maybe a little bit more effective, especially with blogs or lines, and I can just skip lines real quick. And and then as I get down to where I want, let's say I want to read the section, then I can turn my rotor to something else, maybe vertical navigation. Now remember, there are two control elements. I can always go left to right by swiping left and right. And then I can use the rotor to have a secondary navigation, like line by line, vertical navigation, and so forth. But this becomes a really effective way of using a voiceover to read a web page. For more information, go to iPadsForSpecialNeedsBook.com where you'll find more videos, other resources like cheat sheets, and a book on how to use the iPad for your special needs user.